Well, that is it. Shopping done for the day. And crack on. Karis has taken the dog uh, and Alice for another lap around the, uh, around the house. What a gorgeous day. Oh, turns out my kitchen is really, really echoey. This is going to be fun. But what I thought I'd do, because today is a really, really beautiful day, really, really nice. Uh, it would be lovely down the beach now. Um, but it's got some really, really nice opportunities with the light coming through the window the way it is, really, really strong light. So I thought a good opportunity for today is to do um, sort of, not street photography practice as such, but it's, it, it's, it's training your eye. So well, basically I'm going to walk around the house looking for abstract photography. Um, and I'm going to use the Fujifilm X100V because this is as a 35mm field of view, so it's a 35mm focal length. Um, but it's good at close focusing, so it'll focus about that distance. So it's, this will be good, I think, for, for quite macro shots. Um, yeah, and it's going to be a nice challenge because I noticed that the sun rises in that, this side of the house and sets over the front of the house. So as the sun moves around, it's going to give me different, completely different photographic opportunities. So over the last couple of days, I've noticed some really, really good uh, light shapes and patterns and, and stuff. And it's good because once you start seeing them, you see them all over your house. So yeah, grab yourself a 35mm lens if you've got one, or put your camera in 35mm, tape, tape it up if you want, put some tape around it. And just uh, wander around looking for, keep, the, keep the, the shots as simple as possible. So the, the less you can get in the, in the photograph, the better. So for me, abstract photography is obviously um, about taking an image that isn't instantly recognisable as to what it is, which is going to be quite challenging around the house, I know. Um, but yeah, it's, it's about keeping it simple, keeping it minimalistic, uh, and looking for shapes and contrast and lines and textures and that sort of thing. So yeah, today's going to be good. So uh, first things first, let's put the kettle on. Do you want a cup of tea? I do, I'm gasping. Right, let's get cracking. Right then, we've got this gorgeous plant, which we've not long had, so it's all immaculate, all nice and closed up. And what I'm thinking of, if I can use uh, some of the details and the leaves, like these lines here, which look really, really cool, but I'm probably going to be shooting from above. So pick out a detail where it's like, they've got the lines going through the leaves there, that might look really, really cool. So just keep an eye, because it's nice soft light, because it's near the window as well, so it's, it's, it's not too contrasty. So probably have something like this, uh, this bulb near the near the top of the camera so that blurs so I might shoot it around about 2.5 2.8 so I might aim for this sort of area here so I've got like the nice detail and that bit there uh, and the leaves there and then obviously have the bulb close to the top now it just looks really really cool So this is a cool shot I took the other day and the light is exactly the same now and the sun's moved in the same place so it's shining just through this back door and I've put, as I put the chair there it looks really really cool but what's happening is the light is actually reflecting off the patio door. So with the patio door open, um, I'll show you what happens. So with the patio door shut you just get the single lines which looks quite cool from above. But if I open the patio door it reflects and I get those cool lines from above. Well, Karis will kill me for filming this, but if, um, <laughs> if I look at the top of the extraction and then get the camera really high up, there's this shape here. So if that, if imagine a square there and add that in the top left hand corner, this angle coming down here and then a square there. I think including that tone here, this line coming in from the top corner, that would be really, really cool. So I'm just going to grab the camera now and have a go at that. These blinds are cool because obviously you've got these phenomenal lines, parallel lines going that way. So if you put the camera really close there you could emphasize you could, you could take a section there um, but if you come up and point the camera down you've got this really really nice sort of tones and, and lines that you could get a, a nice balanced shot a lot easier so I do like that So 
this is pretty cool. Um, I really like this triangle corner here, which lights up that um, skirting. And that would be a nice, a nice shape in the right hand side of a square with the left hand side of the square having this sort of triangle shape around here. So um, yeah, just taking that section there, just metering for the whites. And then this dark area here will be really, really black. Um, and yeah, just I think if we go really close to really close to the end of the skirt in there, you'll have that shape, which looks really really cool with the line pointing up towards that corner there. So there's some really, really amazing, I'm in one of the back bedrooms now where the sun rises on this side of the house. Some really amazing light coming through here. I don't know why you can see that, I've darken a bit. Um, and what I'm thinking of is getting the camera looking down slightly um, and then just using these details in a, in a, in a corner. So like in a, in a, in a top right hand corner. So I have a lot of negative space over this side. So this will all be black and just pick out a couple of these teeth just in the top right hand corner. I think that'll look really, really good. So I don't even know what this is supposed to be. It's just some ornament beside the bed. Uh, <laughs> don't think I've ever taken much notice of it before. Uh, but what I really like is in low light, where the light's coming through the window above it, how dark the tones are around here. So I'm thinking there's two photographs here. Um, there's a really, really close up section of just the back end of, of what? I mean, it's a, one of them. It's <laughs> a balloon thing I suppose but um, yeah so just a close up of the head part of it there and then a square of the tail <laughs> which looks really funny but I really do like the tones on the left hand side of it so yeah a close up section of the uh, of this dog <laughs> inflatable made of <laughs> ceramic inflatable dog that's really funny Well, if nothing else, I'm glad I did this. Just for, otherwise, I don't think I'd have noticed this at my house. I mean, this is fantastic. Top of the uh, the banisters, um, and these spindles here have got the the light coming off the blinds. Phenomenal, really, really cool. And then in the background, see if we can uh, just focus the the background there, leaving an amazing effect. In uh, there's a background stripe, so it's just a case of keeping the camera um, in a position where you can't really see these details here so much because obviously as soon as you see these details um, you're going to be able to tell what they are but if I can get if I can get it so that I'm not seeing the traditional shape of the banisters or the, the whatever you want to call them that would be really really good really really nice that is just a case of and look at the light going down there it's absolutely awesome Really, really, really glad I've got my wrist strap because I'm dangling over <laughs> the camera over the balcony here, over the um, just to get that light on that back wall there. It's really, really cool. See that against the back wall? So that looks really, really smart. Um, and then there's some nice light on the other side of these banisters as well. Um, so yeah, just got the camera kind of like that over the edge. So yeah, wrist strap's very, very handy just in case I drop it. But I do really like that light coming down there. That will be definitely be abstract. But the problem is with that photograph. It won't be sharp because it's a, a, a silhouette. It won't actually be sharp in the picture, but yeah. So I'm going to give it a break now, this side of the house, because the light starts to move around and it keeps going in between uh, between clouds. So yeah, I'm going to give it a couple of hours when the, when the sun's about to set around the front of the house. And then um, I come back and see what, see how it changes. But yeah, so far so good. I'm really enjoying this. It's actually, I've probably taken probably 15 photographs that I really think are going to work out really well. So it's kind of addictive actually. It's, just, it's difficult to stop. <laughs> Once you start seeing the light, you see it everywhere. Mm -hmm. 
Well, I gotta say that went really well. Apologies, daddy duties called and uh, uh, little Ellis woke up and uh, I didn't get to do my evening shoot, sadly, but it, was, it went a bit cloudy as well. So I did lose the light, the bright light that was giving me that nice contrast. But what do you reckon to the pictures? I really like them. I think it was good. It was a really, really interesting challenge. And literally within sort of 20 minutes, 15, 20 minutes, I was seeing abstract shots everywhere and I really enjoyed it. Um, and it's a really, really good practice, especially for like street photography, because especially the way I shoot anyway, um, I'm always looking for those strong lines, strong contrast, strong details. Um, walking around the house uh, basically kept my uh, my my eye sort of in check, as it will. So yeah, I really enjoyed it. It was a good challenge. And since then, actually, I haven't been able to stop seeing compositions everywhere. I'll go for walk to the shops. I'll see a load a load of trolleys lined up out the shop outside the shops. I'll see a load of compositions within the trolleys and all the abstract lines and stuff. So yeah, it was really really good. I enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed the uh, the pictures. What we'll do is we'll dive in and have a look at um, some of the shots we've got. And uh, yeah, just. Uh, just talk through what, what I like about the picture, what I don't like about the picture. They're all shot in black and white, but I actually do I really, really like most of them, to be honest. It was really, really good fun. So let's have a look at the shots. Um, the first picture, um, I'd, I'd, I'd noticed this before. Um, we'd had breakfast there a couple of days, and over the over the couple of days before, the um, the light was really, really strong, and I'd always, always noticed the light coming through the window there like that. Now, with the patio door opened, it reflect really, really nicely and give us this sort of lattice effect. So, yeah, just... Um, Where's the settings now? Where's the settings? Where's the, where's my histogram? Where's my tools, window, workspace, essentials? Film strip. Right, there we are. So top right, you can see the the, the settings there. Um, uh, basically, what was important was just the depth of field because I was really, really close to, to these lines here. So F5.6. Um, obviously, I could have shot that at half that shutter speed. I'm not sure what I was doing there, but um, yeah, uh, but I, I'm not sure I got the the middle line perfect. I should have chosen either the, one of the wooden panels here or one of the white gaps here and got that bang in the middle. But otherwise, I really like that shot. Um, <clears throat> shot I seen just as I was going. I was, I was about to move the chair and put it back into position. Actually, loved all the geometric geometric even shapes around the chair really really awesome you could look at you could look at this photograph and uh, and just and just um sort of take in all the different shapes and stuff it's a really really cool angle um and after looking at it for a while i actually forget that it's a chair but yeah again really really nice tones nice strong contrast in that this is a shot that i think would be useful because when you see um shots like this around your house it's kind of the same as if you were out doing some street photography and you, you would you'd notice sort of like this an alleyway or something with a nice shape at the top top right hand corner and just imagine somebody walking into the scene or, or, or something creating a nice silhouette. So around the house being able to spot stuff like this is really, really good because it the more you see it, the, the easier it will be if you were now to hit the streets of whatever city you're nearby, you live nearby, and you you'd see shots like this all the time. So it's really, really good practice actually. Um Sorry, go back on that one. Actually, the light had changed initially when I went to take the photograph. The that effect, that triangle was a lot higher up, and I didn't like the picture as much. When I came back, we'd lost the contrast, but on this back wall. But I've much preferred that triangle as the as as the sun went lower or something. I don't know what it was, and I don't know why it it, it made it, the triangle smaller, but definitely looked better. So these shots you can see all around the house. Just, I mean, I'm lucky with the with the Fujifilm uh, the X100 series. You can actually focus really, really close to the camera. Um, so yeah, I was able just to overexpose, not not, not clip, but overexpose the background, um, and just basically keep an eye on the histogram. So I wasn't going too bad. But then in in Lightroom, just lift up the blacks and um, yeah, just get. It was all about balance with this shot. I mean, I didn't get it perfect because I wanted that corner should have been bang on in that corner there. That corner there should have been bang in that corner there. But so it's not perfect. But getting the getting the obviously these are the blinds. So getting this shot horizontal completely was just de near impossible to get balance right. So I opted for an angle, and I, I do like the shot. But once you get the basic shots like that, you start seeing them everywhere. Then this again, <clears throat> there's lots of compositions within that plant, and that would have been easier if you were just photographing the plant as a plant and as a, as a piece of art or something. Um, but what I wanted to do is make it as abstract as possible. So I didn't want anything obvious. Let's get all these up together. Um, I didn't really want anything obvious. Obviously, it's, it's difficult with, with the plant, if you haven't got the right lens and stuff like that, to do an abstract shot or get really, really close so it doesn't look like a plant. Um, but I, I think I did all right. I mean, just by keeping it, you, you have to, obviously not the last two, but you have to look initially just to see what they are. And that was kind of the plan. I didn't really want to... 
I didn't really want to make it too obvious what they were straight away. But as soon as you, you know, as soon as you know it's a plant, obviously it's easy. But I didn't want it to be too obvious. But yeah, I do really, really love the tones, love the details. And then all this was was just lifting, the, uh, dropping the blacks, and then just lifting the whites in Lightroom, and then just adding a bit of clarity. And that was pretty much all I did to it. But um, yeah, like them. F two point five, as you see in the top right there, just so I get a bit of. Um, a bit of separation. I've got something that's obvious and then the rest of it just falls off. So yeah, really like them. The extractor fan, extractor hood, whatever you want to call it. Um, yeah, it was, it was really, really cool and it's nice to be able to see shots like this because a lot of people would just want to know what on earth, like the missus see me taking that picture is like, what are you doing? <laughs> but once you see th things, you, you, you start seeing the capabilities in anything and you'd never know, of course. I asked, I asked Karis what she thought this photograph was and no, not a chance was she going to get that that was her own extractor fan, like, you know. But yeah, quite cool. Very, very minimalistic. A lot of uh, negative space there. Um, yeah, I do. I like the texture, actually, in the galvanised steel, which I didn't like initially, but it actually works in the black and white. So the this is exactly out of camera. All I did was put the blacks really, really low on, um, on Acros. Um, and literally metered to the histogram to the right and this is pretty much out of camera it really really went really nice and solid there um, I might have dropped the blacks a little bit more in Lightroom but that's pretty much it I knew that I wanted these sort of teeth uh, pointing down from the top right hand corner so you've got these teeth staggering down and I really really like it I think it's one of my favorite shots of the day uh, really minimal very very much abstract and you, it's not obvious at all what the photograph is so yeah really pleased with that um, just by this point I was starting to see compositions everywhere so it was yeah it was a bit of fun <laughs> uh, this little fella right so I've got a load of him uh, let's put these up together I've got loads I've got loads of him and it's just the tones I knew how well the tones are going to going to come out um, yeah and it, it was just like that 3D sort of simple bit of fun um, yeah I do I do like these photographs I think they're cool um, obviously I know what it is and you know you, you do as well because you've seen the video but straight away I don't think you would but uh, yeah I, I really really like them but really really cool tones nice 3D look to it um, yeah, a bit of fun. The one on the left had to be done. <laughs> Just a bit of fun. So the banister, absolutely thrilled to see this. I got quite a few from the banister. Um, really, really simple, but again, just making sure that it wasn't obvious what the photographs were of. Um, obviously, this one's a lot more obvious because you've got the um, the detail around the the bottom of the spindle things there, but um, otherwise, that light coming through and hitting the window there is absolutely fantastic. Here's where hitting the wall. That's really, really cool. Really, really happy with that. But yeah, generally speaking, I think the, these these photographs basically captured exactly what I wanted to do from the shoot. So yeah, I was really, really pleased with these. Um, again, not much editing, perhaps just dropped the blacks in Lightroom a little bit and lifted the whites, pretty much all it was, just to make sure I was obviously shooting black and white so it was easy to see these compositions you know, because obviously the black and white high contrast settings on the camera was emphasizing the, the clarity between the black and the white. So these shots were quite easy to see. Once you'd, once you'd spotted that there was the, the, the patterns and the shades and everything were going to be on the spindles, you'd see shots like this for, for absolutely ages until eventually the light disappeared. Uh, that's, probably the, that's probably my least favorite because you can tell what it is. Yeah. These ones are really cool. Um, the last photographs I took, um, I didn't think they were going to come out as well as they have, but they are very, very much like, what on earth are they? You would, you, you, unless you've seen the video, you wouldn't know what they were. So I'm really pleased with them. Um, so they, they basically captured exactly what I was trying to achieve f with the shoot. Just, just basically, what on earth is it? What can you create around the house which add, add mystery? Lovely black and whites, lovely tones. Um, but yeah, really, really pleased with them. Yeah, it was good fun. I enjoyed that. Great challenge. And obviously we've all got the benefit of time. So grab your camera, stick a 35mm lens on it or something, and, or a 35 field of view, tape your lens up, and just keep an eye out for shapes and light around the house. It was really, really good challenge. And I actually, once I seen it, I kept I was spotting compositions all the time then after that. It was, it was addictive, actually. Really, really good challenge. But definitely going to be beneficial for obviously keeping our eye in, 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 in shape for when we're looking at, when we eventually get out and do some more street photography again. It's going to be really good practice for that. So yeah, let me know in the comments which of the images you thought was the strongest. I would be interested to see what you thought of the, uh, the photographs. Uh, but yeah, the key was to try and get, get some images that were um, not so obvious. So obviously some of them are going to be very obviously parts of the plant and stuff like that. But yeah, the, the idea was to, to, to create some abstract shots. But let me know which of, which your favourite image was and I'll be interested to see. Uh, also, just to mention, I did a video the other day. I'll put a link up there. 
um, which was basically all the things I wanted to achieve or a list of 10 things I wanted to achieve during my isolation and one of them was uh, color grading video which I've never had to do before. So this entire video was shot in uh, on the Fujifilm X-T3 in Eterna profile, so that's forcing me to color grade to a degree, which I've read online, Eterna isn't that difficult to color grade, so it should be okay. But I hope you enjoyed the video. Do check out my Patreon uh, account if you'd like to support the channel through this difficult time. I'd really, really be grateful for any support. Obviously, it's not something I ever wanted to ask my subscribers to do at all, but during this absolutely abysmal time for work, <laughs> if you would like to uh, support the channel, that would be much, much appreciated. But anyway, thank you so much for watching. Hit the subscribe button if you enjoyed the uh, the video and i'll see you again soon be safe and take care